Hey, welcome to Try This from The Washington Post. Try This is a series of audio courses to help you take on common challenges and learn something new without having to make a big time commitment. I'm Christina Quinn, and I'll be learning with you per usual. In this course, we're going to loosen our belts and unpack the mysteries of gut health, specifically the gut microbiome, because at the end of the day, what you put inside your body affects everything else. If you're new here, welcome. This course will have three classes, aka three episodes. So in this first episode, we're going to learn what the microbiome is exactly and find out what all those microbes are really up to. In the second episode, we'll find out what happens to your gut microbiome when you start eating certain kinds of food. And in our third and final episode, we're going to give you practical ways to make some changes without causing major upheaval to your life and your wallet. And we'll explain why you don't really need to take that probiotic. Okay, classes in session. Let's try this. When I have questions about anything having to do with digestion, I reach out to my favorite intestinal expert, Dr. Trisha Pasricha. I'm an instructor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. My second title would be I'm a gastroenterologist at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Do you want me to go get a white coat? I've got like, I've got all kinds of props. I have a stethoscope, a white coat. I can go get it. No, no, no. I believe you. I know you're a real doctor. <laughs> Dr. Prasricha also has a third title. She's a columnist here at the Washington Post. Her column is called Ask a Doctor. Hey, thanks for meeting with me. Yeah, I'm delighted. You, you picked one of my favorite topics. I love everything about the gut, but the microbiome is like especially exciting. What is it specifically that excites you? I think it's so misunderstood. And yet the data is really thrilling and it gives me a lot of hope for the future. And there's a lot of emerging research because there's still a lot that we don't know, right? There's a lot that we don't know. I mean, people have known about the bacteria that live in our bodies for decades and decades, like dating back to the early 1900s and even late 1800s. But in a way, I think the part of it that's new is really understanding the role it plays in our disease and how we might manipulate it towards health. That part yeah. is still newer and still emerging. What exactly is the gut microbiome? Where is it? What's going on there? The gut microbiome, that is what people have estimated to be around the order of about 100 trillion different microbes that live in our guts. Our guts are not unique in our bodies in that, in that they have their microbiome. Our skin has a microbiome. Our mouths have a microbiome. But our gut microbiome seems to really play an important role in our health and in disease. And we're still kind of trying to figure out what those connections are. Well, I think when people think the gut, they just think of like their abs. In my case, super, super taut abs. Same. <laughs> so, so tight. No, I was, <laughs> but the gut is actually, it's, it's not just that. The gut, I think, is an all-encompassing term. We're, we're usually talking about the colon, although bacteria live in the small intestine as well. And we're usually not talking about the stomach, though, specifically. Very few bacteria can survive in the acidic environment of the stomach. The stomach is the beginning of digestion, you know, and that's where the food starts to become broken down into tiny particles that then pass into the small intestine. And so by the time food has reached the colon, you know, and it has transitioned to what we might call poop, it, you really derive all of the nutrients that you want out of it because the small intestine's job, which is in between the stomach and the large intestine or the colon, is to really absorb all of the nutrients and all of the good aspects of whatever you've eaten into the bloodstream and where it can be processed and used by the rest of your body. So it's really the waste that makes it to your large colon. But if you think about it, um, you know, waste is, means like your body, the rest of your body or other organs don't have a need for it. But what could make it there is fiber. Fiber is not digested. It's not broken down. It's not absorbed by the body, but it's a wonderful thing. And it's a wonderful thing that microbes live in our colon. They love fiber. As the old saying goes, one man's waste is another microbe's pleasure feast. And then when they take that fiber in, you know, they produce these beneficial metabolites, one of which could be short chain fatty acids or, or other things. Short-chain fatty acids are produced when gut bacteria ferment fiber in your colon, giving life to the cells that line the inside. They're part of a bigger picture that Dr. Prasricha spells out for us after the break. Okay. 
Okay, so when we think about the microbiome, I think it's helpful to think about it maybe in three different parts, right? So there's these things called prebiotics, um, then there's maybe probiotics, and then there's these like postbiotics. Let's start with prebiotics, which is non-digestible food. Fiber is a prebiotic, and we should be eating about 25 to 30 grams of fiber a day. But most of us aren't. All of us Americans, we're not getting enough fiber in our diet. So just take, accept that. Whatever way you can increase the amount of fiber in your diet, you'll be better off. But if you really want to take it to the next level, what you want is the diversity in your diet. That means different kinds of fiber sources you would find in veggies, fruits, whole grains, and nuts. The microbes in your gut ferment that fiber, which fosters a super happy and diverse universe of bacteria. So all of these things contribute to the bacteria themselves and what kind of the composition, what strains and species these different bacteria are. Probiotics are the so-called good bacteria that we associate with eating certain foods. If we're just talking about ingesting foods that we know contain beneficial bacteria, so that would be like fermented foods, kimchi, sauerkraut, active cultures like in Greek yogurt, nobody's ever going to say that that's a bad idea. And, and those things are known to improve the kind of overall composition of the microbiome, and they're associated with decreased rates of gut symptoms. But here's the thing. Dr. Prasricha says the ideal form of a probiotic is the kind our body makes itself. And the way your body does that is by making certain dietary choices. This goes back again to eating good sources of fiber. Okay, so now let's dig into postbiotics. This is a lesser known word, but it's just as important. That's the other you know, fancy word for what is, the, what is it that the bacteria are producing? What comes after that? And one of those things are short-chain fatty acids. Um, short-chain fatty acids like butyrate, you may have heard of, are these beneficial molecules that have a, an important role in our bodies. They can kind of help dampen inflammation. They're associated with uh, reduced risk of all kinds of diseases, including cardiovascular diseases. And the kinds of postbiotics that your microbiome produces, they're different person to person, and they, and they ultimately ultimately can be traced back oftentimes to what you're feeding that microbiome in the first place. So the more fiber you eat, and we're talking veggies, whole grains, and the microbes are just like, nom, 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 I'm so happy. They love it. It's a buffet for them. And, and the fiber, you know, just because it's not absorbed, doesn't mean it's not benefiting you sort of personally earlier on in the process, right? Because fiber, it takes longer to digest. So some of the benefits you feel even before it hits the colon is that you might feel fuller longer. Like you'll feel like you've had a more satisfied meal as opposed to ultra processed foods that have this quick release of sugar. They're very easily broken down by the stomach. And then you're hungry again 15 minutes later. Right. Okay. So all the action really happens in the intestines. There's a lot of mileage in there, pun intended. <laughs> there is. It's long. It's windy. The amount of time it takes for your food to become poop, to, to exit the body is different from, the, from me. It's different from the other people who might be watching this. Everyone takes a little bit of a, a different length of time, but, but it can be on the order of days. And so it takes a long time to get absorbed first by the small intestine, all the nutrients, but then, you know, we have a little bit more control in when we poop. And so if we, for whatever reason, have decided like we can't afford to poop for the next five hours, we're in this middle of this podcast, we've got to focus. Um, you could, you could, you could control that. You could hold it in. And that entire time, whatever you're, you've not, you've decided to not excrete, your microbiome continues to feed off of it sits there and your microbiome is loving it. Um, and it's, eating that fiber or whatever else you've given it to, to chew on and producing more and more short chain fatty acids. It's a really nice visual. Yeah. And like right before lunch, it's perfect. That's great. <laughs> so now that we've established that we are nothing more than mortal hosts to trillions of microbes, we're going to see what we can do to make our tiny overlords thrive in a world that is stacked against us. But first, recap time. We humanoid bipeds are hosts to trillions of microbes that live in our gut, a.k.a. our intestines, namely our colon. That's where the party really is. And as Dr. Pastricha explained, it's helpful to think about the gut microbiome in three different parts. Prebiotics, which is fiber that feeds the microbes and keeps them happy, nom nom nom. Then there's probiotics, which is beneficial bacteria from certain kinds of food with live cultures, like yogurt and kimchi. 
But if you eat a fiber-rich diet, you're creating your own good bacteria by keeping your gut microbes happy. Then there's postbiotics, which is a byproduct of the first two and has compounds that are absorbed through the colon where they can go on to benefit the rest of your organs. It's all connected, my friend. Okay, that's it for episode one. Meet me in episode two, where we find out how the microbiome could play a role in the way our bodies use energy. Nom, nom, nom. I have two things for you before I sign off. The second one is a new way to keep learning and for me to learn from you. First, as always, if you're listening when this is newly released, the next episode will be out next week. In this case, specifically on Tuesday, July 1st. But you can hear the remaining two classes right now and ad-free with a subscription to The Washington Post. Your Post subscription needs to be connected to Apple Podcasts. The easiest way to do that is to go into Apple Podcasts and look up the Washington Post channel. All right, now the second thing. The things I learn in working on the show really do change how I think and do things day to day. I keep learning as time goes on. And I also hear from family, friends, and listeners about what they're trying. So I want to share more with you. And I want a better way to share what you find beneficial. In a few weeks, we're launching a Try This newsletter. This first one will have additional tips for your gut microbes. And I want to know what works for you. We could include your advice in the newsletter and a future episode of Try This. Tell me what you do to feed your microbes. Record a voice memo or send me a note at trythisatwashpost.com. Please be sure to give me your whole name and how you spell it. The email address again is trythisatwashpost.com. Thanks for listening and I'll meet you in class too.